Okay, we're back with designing with PlantWave Pro. Uh, in our previous video, we learned about how PlantWave works, how the data comes through, and uh, different fundamental principles behind our design approach in PlantWave. And now what we're gonna get to do is we're gonna dive into the app. And before we start designing, let's just have a look at some of these pro features in the plant wave app. So first thing you're going to do, just going to go to the bottom left here and tap on that. And you're going to see, we have, uh, all these different things. We have the frequency that you can choose. That's the base frequency of, uh, of the sound engine. So you have 432, 440, 528. You also have your root note and your uh, your scale. So the, the way that the data is scaled, we tend to use pentatonic major and pentatonic minor. Now chromatic will make everything very, uh, it's, it's literal, it's not scaled at all. Uh, and that can be a little bit more, uh, uh, a little bit less pleasing to listen to. Uh, but and then we have major, um, natural minor. We have all these different scales, but we tend to you, do everything in pentatonic major and pentatonic minor. Next, you have master effects. Uh, so here you have your volume, you have tempo of the sound engine. So that is going to determine uh, how quickly notes are allowed to be triggered. And then we can further get into that with the different subdivisions and things. And then we have reverb. Uh, and different effects. And this reverb section is quite complex. If you're not a sound designer, I recommend not really diving too much into that. Um, maybe just starting with a sound set that you already like and, and playing around with that. Uh, next, we have four different instruments. Uh, so PlantWave can play up to four instruments all at once. And so in Celestial Being, it's playing bass, electric piano, flute and then this kind of like pixie dust sound so uh you can see this is the bass and what we're going to do the each instrument has so much customization it goes super deep like this is just one instrument and i don't expect you to know what all this stuff does if you're a sound designer you probably already know and you probably don't need this tutorial uh, but what we're going to focus on is just the instruments. We're going to focus on activity range. We're going to focus on arpeggiation rate and then lowest note and note range. That's what we're going to play with because everything else is, is quite, quite advanced. And we'll get to that eventually someday. But if you are really interested in synthesis, uh, I would encourage you to check out Ableton Live has some tutorials as well, just around uh, synthesis, uh, which is a whole, I mean, that's a whole, like that's a two year uh, deep dive to, to even go down into that. <laughs> so, uh, so we're just gonna start again with the instrument, the activity range, the arpeggiation rate, uh, lowest note and note range. Cool. Uh, so, before we get into that, let's just start with a sound set that already has, uh, that, that, that's, that's set up to be uh, pretty literal in terms of its translation of the wave. Now, if you remember when we were listening to, to Tobias sing the wave of uh, the, the clim climate anomalies <laughs> over the last 130 years, uh, you know, he was singing that wave. You could very literally hear when the when the graph was going up versus when it was going down. This sound set called Signal is the one that's probably most comparable to that. And so it really just has one instrument. It's a sine wave here, um, and it just follows the it just follows the wave. So let's listen to that. I'm just gonna go over here, plug in my plant wave. Mm -hmm. 
So you can pretty clearly follow that wave. It's going way down, it's going farther up. It's a very literal translation of the wave we're getting from the plant. And there was not producing anything more. It was just kind of holding on a note for a minute, a moment. Whoa, so it's going all over the place, right? But you can hear that wave. It's, it's, it's super clear what's happening there. And so similarly, we have another sound set that's called Points on Waves. Uh, this is also uh, one that is very a very literal translation of the wave, but it expresses itself not just through one instrument, but multiple instruments, each instrument representing a different level of activity. So let's go to that. So in this sound set, this kind of uh, Japanese flute is always playing. Here it is. It's always playing. But then we have these other, I'm, and I'm going to turn off. Th this reacts to activity range. This is activating this instrument when the plant is particularly active. So if you go to the right, this is when it's really active. And then to the left, it's when it's uh quite inactive so we can choose whether or not the instruments are on or off based on the activity level so i'm just turning that one off all, all the way now we have the harp which plays at lower activity levels we have two different guitars uh, that play at the other activity level so this one is Guitar one is at medium activity and guitar two is at a higher activity. So let's listen to each one of them individually. I'm just gonna turn off this harp, turn off this guitar, and we're only gonna hear guitar two. This is the one called. So you can hear this guitar following the wave and now if we want to we can increase the range of notes that this guitar is allowed to play so right now it's allowed to play uh, basically two octaves like up to 36 notes what if we up that all the way to like 64 it's playing some higher notes Another thing we're going to do is we're going to enable monophonic. That means it can only play one note at a time. It, it Notes won't overlap. There's a very slight difference in that sound. Right. <laughs> but what we're going for on this one is, is for it to be a literal translation. So here, the arpeggiation rate is the rate at which the note is allowed to be triggered by the wave from the plant. So here we have it set to a 16th. We can have it set all the way to 128th. <laughs> Sounds really crazy. If we turn off monophonic, we'll hear multiple notes able to ring out at the same time. <laughs> if you play, if you put it on a monophonic, then it's only a lot of, like, each new note turns off the last note. So that's what that does. What's cool about this is that now we have this instrument that is, it has this big note range, and now we've set the timing to an eighth note. And it's an eighth note at what? 
like uh, 76 beats per minute. So it's, this is now set up to allow us to follow the wave. So you can hear that and follow the wave. You get a sense of it, whether the notes are going up or down. Now, while it's giving us a sense of whether or not the notes are going up and down, it's not giving us a sense of the activity level of the plant. And that's where using a variable arpeggiation rate using this grid, that's where that comes in handy. So we can make it so that uh, when things are less, uh, when it's less active, it plays less frequency, frequently. So we can say that, let's just like, let's just draw a little, do a little drawing here, pop some of these in. So this means that at the higher activity level, it'll play faster. At a lower activity level, it'll play less frequently. Right? So you can very much tell the activity level of the plant in addition to following that wave as the melody. So let's check this out. What happens if I touch it? I let go. Got silent there for a moment. Now, we don't have to have this be guitar. We can also have this, instead, we can have this be harp, right? And we can also make it so that it's not monophonic, so that the notes are allowed to overlap. We could use a different instrument, like something like electric piano. We could use something else, like an organ. We could play around with an actual piano sample. Right? So this is a way of representing the data in a more literal way where the faster the notes are, the more uh, activity level there is in the plant. Now, we can also uh, express activity levels in the plant by playing around with having different instruments activated at different activity levels. So we'll just start this one off saying, uh, it's, it, we can give this a single arpeggiation rate for that. So we can just start this off 16th note. That's what, that's what this piano is allowed to play. And the lowest note is a C, and it's allowed to do 64 note range. Okay, cool. So we have that. Let's give this one kind of this, the same uh, lowest note. It's going to be a C. And it ha let's give it 64 note range. Okay, great. Uh, now we can get have both these play at the same time. This guitar and the piano. Right? So now you hear both these instruments following the wave. And that gives you an idea of the wave, but it doesn't give you the idea of the activity level. However, what if we made it so that only the guitar plays when we're at a higher activity level, and only the piano plays 
when we're a lower activity level. Now we're going to be able to, and now it's guitar, so we know that's a higher activity level from the plant. And then when we hear piano, we'll know it's a lower activity level. Doesn't seem like that's happening. Oh, there we go. Lower activity level. And now a higher activity level. What if we wanted to say, you know what? Let's have a third instrument and we'll say it's this harp. So the harp will play only when there's the middle, when it's in the middle activity level. So we'll bring this down to C0 and we'll say 64. So now you can listen to the wave from the plant as notes and you can hear what activity level relatively the plant is in based on what instruments are triggered. So that's a harp. And we could change this instead of a harp. We can make this an electric piano so it's more differentiated. That's, that's the guitar. Oh, let's make that a harp instead. It might be nicer. It's the harp. Now that's the electric piano. Let's see if we can get the regular piano coming back into the mix. Oh. Oh, that's, that's the electric piano still. There's the regular piano. And so we, what we've done is we've just built a monitoring system for our plant. So now when we hear this, we kind of know we can follow this wave and we have a general idea of how active the plant is, how much shift there is happening in the plant. And so we can also change what frequency it's in. And if you're curious of what it sounds like unscaled, uh, this is chromatic, so this would be this would be unscaled, and this is violating our value of harmony uh, <laughs> uh, thing we were discussing earlier. But this is an unscaled version of the data, not as fun to listen to. So that's why, again, we put things into a pentatonic key. So. I hope that helps you understand how to make a um, just a quick little sound set that is based on trying to monitor the data from your plant. Uh, again, this, while it's, it is nice to listen to, this isn't as nice maybe as we could get it to sound. We could play with it a lot more. Uh, and in fact, in our next episode, we're gonna focus on designing for musicality. But before that, let's save this. Uh, I'm just gonna say duplicate, and uh, we're gonna say, we're gonna call this literal translation for monitoring. That's a, that's a long one. Let's just call it monitoring. All right, great, saved. Excellent. So now that's a part of my sound sets that I have. And uh, yeah, you can you can make as many of these as you want. So yeah, in our next one, we're going to dive into playing with creating a sound set that's just more musical. And it might not be as literal of a translation. It might not tell us this exactly what's happening in the plant. But in this situation, what we're going to do is we are going to demonstrate how we can kind of use the plant signal more as like wind chimes. So uh, join me for that and I'll see you soon.